Hi! This is uh, According to Pete. It's the first episode of uh, September. Before I get started, uh, shout out to Parallax. We had a couple of people come out and visit us last week. It was really cool to see you guys, Ken and Jessica. You guys rock. We're going to do some cool things. Just to let everybody know, we're going to do some cool things. So let's talk about the uh, guitar project. That's what we're going to do again today. I took a guitar and instead of using the standard electromagnetic pickups, I used surface transducers. I wanted to uh, devise a pickup system that took the shape of the electric guitar body and the material of the electric guitar body, like particular kind of wood and such, into the tone equation. All the electric guitar players I've ever heard are like, tone, man, tone, did you hear that tone? Tone, 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 man, it's just brutal. But the electromagnetic uh, pickups don't really bring the material and the shape of the body into the equation very much. And last time I had uh, basically a proof of concept. I had one service transducer, I had one little op amp as a preamp, and I fed it to uh, that amplifier over there, and um, it made some cool noise. This time I've got three attached. Each one has a preamp circuit, plus there is a master volume out, and I even have a proof of concept for my uh, RGB light show. So there, let's do it. Now the first thing you notice is I yanked out the pickups and I yanked out the electronics because I wanted some space to put some junk. We have one big surface transducer over here and two of the smaller ones, one here and one here. This guy down here is my preamp section. I got my master out right here and then I got uh, three individual amps for uh, each of the service transducers. One, two, three. So there. There's this guy. This is the MSG EQ7 spectrum analyzer chip. This is a Pro Mini that is a uh, do 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 do. I think it's a 5 volt. Yeah, 5 volt Pro Mini and one RGB LED. Let's talk about the surface transducers. Mounting these things is not trivial. Getting the right transfer of vibration to the service transducer was really a trick. They've got two little tiny screw holes in what I think is the bottom. We don't have a data sheet for this thing. There is a sweet spot to be had on one of these small surface transducers mounted in just the right way with just the right amount of additional pressure placed on it by my finger. Is it pressure? Was I adding capacitance to the circuit somehow? Was I, uh, you know, uh, removing some of the magnetic flux or diverting it in order to get the right tone that was just really, really sweet? I can't tell. Uh, I tried for a long time to figure it out, and I tried different mounting schemes. This one is flipped upside down and JB welded in. It seemed as though having a ferrous material attached to it, and literally, I can put a screw on top of this thing lengthwise, and it sounds even better, fatter, fuller. So I was trying to replicate that with this one. This one is actually JB welded onto a piece of this metal mesh. This one here actually ended up being uh, a little bit less output. Uh, level wise and so the circuit back here uh, actually has a little bit extra gain to sort of boost it up a little bit. I get like I said kind of low level out of this one a little better level out of this one but these are more prone to higher frequencies and they're kind of tinny and honky. This one picks up a fair amount of bass and not too many highs. By mixing the three of these together and then mastering out uh, you get a pretty decent tone. And what I've also found is it's really, really responsive to pick attack. Um, if, you, if you play it soft, it's real soft. If you play it hard, it's like pow, bang, zam, dow. This is the MSG EQ7. This circuit that you're looking at is uh, identical uh, to the sample circuit in the data sheet for this thing. The five volts that I have here supplying this thing are uh, generated by the 5 volt Pro Mini. I feed that thing the 7.4 that comes off of the LiPo, take the 5 volts here off of the VCC pin, which is on the Pro Mini, and that supplies current to this. You've got a VDDA, which is your 5 volts. You've got a VSSA, which actually goes to ground. And then, this is, this is all the power bit. And then you've got a pin that's called ground, which does not go directly to ground. Um, what this thing does is it generates its own internal reference, which is like two and a half volts or half VCC or what have you, 
and then you tie that to ground through a 0.1 cap to filter the reference. Then they've got this external, I, I'm not exactly sure what's going on here. Uh, I didn't read the data sheet too clearly on this. I just followed the, the sample circuit like, eh, that ought to work, and it does. Um, so you tie pin eight, which is like clock in to 33 picofarad. I think you can actually, actually adjust the, um, the peaks of the frequency response with the clock in, but I'm not bothering with that. So I just tied it to ground with a 33 picofarad, like they say. You got an audio input. It is AC coupled, so I don't have to worry about any DC uh, offset on my signal. Uh, through 200K, seems to work pretty well so far. What you have is like a reset line, which you pulse like that, and then you've got the strobe line. So, so much time after the reset goes low, and this is RST, and then I'm gonna call this one STR. After a period, you give this one a pulse, and as I recall, on the down pulse, now, once that latch is low, once you latch that low, um, like right about here, you go and read the output with uh, an ADC line on your on your Arduino. The DC level on that line at this time will represent, and I wrote this all down, the first um, frequency bin is 63 hertz, right? So 63 hertz. And every time you pulse this thing, it goes up to like the next frequency, HZ, not H. So the next one is like 160 hertz, and you keep doing this, and as long as you do this, it'll cycle through. And it cycles through, uh, let's see, 63, so you got 63, that's not a three, uh, 160, 400, 1 kilohertz, 2.5 kilohertz. Wow, I'm really losing it here. Uh -huh. um, 6.25 kilohertz, and then 16 kilohertz, okay? So every one of these pulses represents, you know, such 63, 160, da 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 And it'll just keep clocking through these. Now at any time, you can send it a reset pulse and it'll go back to 63 hertz. So you always know what you're getting. So you don't just pulse this thing forever unless you're gonna keep track of it that way. You know, I, I would probably mess it up. So I'm always gonna hit it with a reset and then go, okay, I know what it's doing. And in my code, that's exactly what I do. Um, for point of interest, since uh, in comment sections past, people were like, oh, you're not gonna get this, that, and the other thing. Well, I played with it, because that's what we do around here. We play with stuff, we see what works. The frequency bins on this thing that actually seem to work are 400, 1K, and 2.5 kilohertz. Um, that probably shouldn't come as a great surprise, um, but the way I've got this set up, right, is that anything that trips the 400 causes red. Anything that causes, uh, anything that uh, comes up in the 1K bin will go green, <laughs> een, and this one blue, right? So, hey, all hail Doppler, red shift, there you go. This is probably pretty obvious, but I'm going to cover it just cause. When I set this up on the Pro Mini, I used a function uh, th that does automatic PWM called analog write. It gives you a high value for a period which is reflective of zero to 255 and then a low value of, yeah, of the not 255. Does that make sense? Probably not. So it spends more time low than high, right? If the value was 255, it would be high all the time. If it were zero, it would be low all the time. The RGB LED, the through-hole one that we, we have, um, is a common anode part. So in order to turn this thing on, I gotta pull it low. That doesn't do that. So what I had to do was basically the value that I stick in here is 255 minus the actual value that the ADC read. There were kind of a lot of, a, a little bit of tweaking to make this thing work right. Um, there seems to be like a little bit of DC offset coming out of the output on the MSG EQ7. And so I had to kind of change the value uh, a little bit to get rid of that. Um, 
right? Because the ADC reads, you know, such and such value, and it's non-zero. When you're not playing anything, it's non-zero. So you have to sort of tweak it to do that. Um, and then you subtract that value from 255. And then what you end up with instead of that is one that's usually high and goes low for a little bit, which works for this. So uh, the greater your ADC value, the longer it ends up being low and the more light you end up having here. One of the other things I found, which was not uh, clearly defined where I was looking on the Arduino website, is which pins will work with analog write. And it's probably obvious somewhere, but like I said, I'm not really Joe Arduino, but this actually made it pretty easy. I ended up starting with like D4, D5, and D6. D5 and D6 work really well for this. D4, which this does not say, did not work. And so uh, they have an example where they just do it on D9. I'm like, I'll just, I'll just move the wire to D9. And all the code does, you sample the ADC, and then um, as you, you know, you, you reset, then you go to the MSG EQ7, you send it a reset, like I showed in the last little bit, and then you send it a pulse, and I'm pulsing through all of them, right, because it has to be done sequentially. And then when it gets up to, like, the 400 hertz bin, the 1K bin, the 2.5K bin, that's when I assign a value and an analog right. Worth a note, I have very much changed... Uh, the nature of this beast, okay? Any vibration, and there's my little LED, you can see that going. Any little vibration gets picked up by the service transducers, okay? So last night I broke a string and um, I just loosened up all the, all the locks on the nut. And, uh, and so now they're loose, or, or they were loose, and so when you play, you hear all that junk. Just a second ago, I was, I was tuning up. <laughs> And you hit this, can you hear that? I'm like, what is vibrating? The tuning peg for the E string, I, you know, there's nothing on it, so it's vibrating. That sounds a lot better. Like I said a little bit earlier, it's really sensitive to um, attack. And when you crank up the, uh, the master on this thing, it's basically overloading the input circuit on the amplifier. And so it sounds a little bit like, I said this for somebody yesterday, sort of like a P90 on acid. I'll turn all these down here. And I got like the sequence of these things jacked up. The first one is like over here. The middle one is over here. And the nah. I'm going to turn up. There's, there's the bass. That's this one right here. Now check this guy out. Largely red, okay, but you do that, and it's like lots of highs, and it starts turning blue. Um, but now let's turn up. Let's see. This is the middle one, so that should be that one there. Ah! Sounds good, no? No. And then. Hear how thin and awful that sounds? You give it a little eh, and it comes in pretty good. This, the screwdriver is ferrous, okay? So I'm either altering, these things have magnets in them, so I'm either altering uh, the, the, the flow of the magnetic flux and deflecting some, or this thing is uh, coupling to me and I'm adding capacitance to the circuit, or I'm actually just pressing down on the chassis and it's getting better transmission of vibration. Worth a note at the same time, these little guys are delicate. I went through like four of them trying to make this work. Have you ever seen these things? They have like a little tiny PCB that's sort of mounted on the side of this thing and it breaks off really easy from that metal chassis. And once it does that, there's like a 35 gauge magnet wire in there that goes like that and then you're done. So to get a halfway decent tone, I got my master all the way up. I'll turn up some bass and then you mix in some of that.
let's talk about the LED for just a sec. There is a lot of different uh, in there, but there's some blue, there's some red, there's some green. The higher you go, the more blue it goes. The lower you go, the more red it goes. And of course, if you're playing a whole chord, it's just gonna be all over the road. You know what? I think I'm gonna stop there. Thanks for watching. Uh, I hope you enjoyed it and got something out of it. I think we're gonna answer a question, a real live question next time. Greg is nodding, so I think that's how he wants to do it. So I guess I'm probably gonna do what Greg says I gotta do. Keep the comments coming. They go in the section below. You can send the questions to feedback at sparkfun.com with, according to Pete, in the subject line. Until next time, bye.